in the city by the muddy brown creek for those with a keen eye this week. We'll see it holds in its grasp five number ones, future or past. This chart is indeed quite unique. Yes, this week's chart had five former future or current number one hits on it. The most we've had on a single chart yet. And at number 10, it's one of the ones that didn't make number one. It's Dig Richards with a little piece of peace, making its one and only appearance in the top 10. Dig was a rock and roller who turned into a club entertainer and reinvented himself as a shaggy bearded troubadour in the early 70s. Tragically, he died of pancreatic cancer at the age of only 42. And at number nine, we have a legendary Australian rock anthem. By the way, there are six Australian acts in the top 10 this week. So maybe a year on, that radio band did have an impact. Eagle Rock by Daddy Cool, which, which was the biggest hit of the year and an era-defining song. There's an old custom at the architecture school at the University of Queensland that whenever this song comes on the PA, guys will drop their trousers and do a sort of waddly dance in their tidy whities or whatnot. Saw Ross Wilson, Daddy Cool's main man at Blues Fest 2022. He played Eagle Rock and unfortunately no one detrousered themselves in honour. Number eight is Sweet Hitchhiker from Creedence Clearwater Revival, an advanced single from the much savaged Mardi Gras album, Creedence's last, which despite being their worst, there are still quite a few bands who made more albums than Creedence who never even rose to the standard of Mardi Gras. Number seven is another Australian band, in fact a Brisbane band, New World, who had a huge worldwide hit with a song that you can't remember why you remember it, Tom Tom Turnaround. It's a twee, throwback, folksy kind of thing with lyrics that don't really go anywhere, but people, especially in Europe, sure did like it. Number six, Seasons of Change. The early 70s were a bit weird on the Australian charts. The music festivals dominated the scene in those days and prog acts were very popular attractions. A few of the proggy progsters decided to have a shot at top 40 stardom, Sherbet being the most successful, but by 1976 they shred every vestige of prog, but Blackfeather, who only released two singles showing their proggy side on Seasons of Change, which did respectable enough business, and one that showed them off as a piano-based boogie act with the much better remembered Bop and the Blues. Time now for our latest, but reasonably well-established section, Hello and Goodbye, in which we see who is new in the top 10 and who they replaced. And new up are Digby Richards' Little Piece of Peace, which joins such great records as Twist and Shout by The Beatles or When a Man Loves a Woman by Percy Sledge as only having made the top 10 for a single week, and the immediately aforementioned Seasons of Change, which hung in for three weeks, this week's sixth spot being its best. And Tom Tom Turnaround in its seven, which went on to take over at number one on October the 8th. The next number one record this week was at 13, seemingly going nowhere. Departing the charts was Carol King, who learned it was too late for It's Too Late, which sputtered out at number two. Aussie rocker Russell Morris, whose sweet, sweet love fell from 9 to 15 after a peak of 7, and the Guess Who with Albert Flasher, who was exposed only as high as number 6. At number 5, it's LA International Airport by American country queen Susan Ray. Aside from being a pretty sizable hit, based on chart performers it was after Eagle Rock, the biggest hit of all the songs in this week's top 10, it was produced by country music superstar Buck Owens. Ray's voice is pretty ordinary, she's not awful but she's no Dolly Parton, and the melody of the song is a little too cluttered for her slightly prissy phrasing, but it was three weeks at number one so perhaps what do I know. At number four it's Mr Sheffield himself, Tony Christie with one of his big bold brassy super hits, I Did What I Did For Maria. 
In this mode, Christy was always great fun, never taking himself ever so seriously and deciding that when he went maximum, he went maximum all the way. A song possessed of an incredible swagger, a pleasing ridiculousness and an uber ballsy vocal performance. Christy made a great career out of it. Number three is one of the best records on the chart this week. Hamilton, Joe, Frank and Reynolds' country rockified version of a song originally pitched to Elvis Presley, Don't Pull Your Love. Curiously, Sam and whoever Dave was at the time covered it in 1971, and it survived the genre change just fine. Seven weeks in the top ten and this week's number three at its peak, it's still a song that hums faintly in the quieter, more distant recesses of memory's pleasant grove. In at number two is a woman who, though based in the US, hadn't really broken through there and was still claimed as an expatriate Aussie, Helen Reddy. Born in Melbourne and singing in public since age four, she won the local equivalent of the X Factor or whatever have you in 1966, and with it, a trip to New York to record. In 1968, she released her first single, the B-side of which I believe in music, was a substantial hit back at home. As was this one from Jesus Christ Superstar, which also made the Canadian top 10 and bagged her US record deal. Thereafter, there were 15 US top 40 hits, successful stints in theatre and in acting, and finally, a return to Australia to earn a degree in clinical hypnotherapy. Sadly, her last days were clouded by dementia, and she died in September 2020 at the age of 78. I Don't Know How to Love Him shows her strong, confident voice. Reddy said as much in an interview that she always sang better when she believed in the song. And it's clear here she knows she's on a winner. Fee fi fo fum, I've got foul facts and here they come. Welcome to Foul's fantastic world of facts. Biggest riser this week was John Congos's He's Gonna Step On You Again, which took a huge step up the charts from 26 to 17, while Lady Rose by the ever annoying Mungo Jerry tumbled eight places to 21. Highest debutante this week is Barbara Streisand's version of the curiously out of step where you lead, one of the most sprightly and upbeat songs from Carole King's record-breaking Tapestry album, which dropped in at number 30, and the longest charting song was with 19 weeks racked up, Ashton Gardner and Dyke's Resurrection Shuffle. In the US, the tip-top hit was Go Away Little Girl by this year's flavour of heartthrob, Donny Osmond. And in the UK, Diana Ross didn't have to wait any longer as I'm Still Waiting knocked the mighty T-Rex off the top spot there. This time last year, in the midst of the radio band, we were looking at the mixtures and their Mungo Jerry cover of In the Summertime at number one. And a year later, in 1972, the Hollies rocked all the way to the top with Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress. And the number one album about town was Daddy Cool's Daddy Who, Daddy Cool, which hung in for seven weeks at the top. Well, they say monkey see, monkey do, but we have the monkey that all the others are looking at, and he's about to drum in the number one record for the week. It's Monty, and he's about to let it off the leash. And at number one is the worst, and I mean the worst, record ever to my knowledge to make number one in Australia. Daddy Cool by Drummond. Utter, irredeemable garbage, which spent two weeks on top here and an unbelievable eight weeks in Melbourne. I don't have words for it. It doesn't deserve words. And that, kids, is how the cow ate the cabbage for the week ending 10th of September 1971. I hope you enjoyed and found this enlightening, and surely if the good Lord's willing and the creeks don't rise, I'll be back with another instalment next week-ish. <laughs>